Hi, this is Ian Mitchell with VTech Communications, and today we're showing off our new hospitality uh, SIP admin tool. And this tool can be used uh, for discovering uh, the hotel phones that you have on your network. It can also be used for uh, monitoring them uh, for registration status or handsets, um, pushing firmware updates, uh, generating configuration files uh, uh, through mass, uh, ma uh, mass generation of configuration files along with pushing individual files um, themselves. So we have some new uh, phones that we've released. Uh, we're calling these kind of Gen 2. So what you'll notice is this tool looks very similar to our um, original tool. It's just that some of the options uh, basically have um, two different sets or two different sections because we have um, a section for our existing kind of Gen 1 uh, CTM phones along with our new uh, Gen 2 phones which is like our S2415 and um, S2315. And this also works with our LS series um, color phones as well. So just to give you an overview, uh, we can see that the tool looks um, just like the original tool for the most part in terms of uh, the layout where you can basically put in um, either a single IP address or a range of IP addresses um, that you wanna try and discover. And then it just gives you this list here on the right side um, and of course, one of the nice things is we can actually do like a, a multi-selection in order to find additional phones. So maybe to start off, we'll just show that. So if we, um, of course, enter in a, a range here, you know, we could just do like 192.168.1.2 and let's say go all the way to, you know, 254, we can just hit to the right and that'll just add that range as an available range that we could pick from. Um, or if we kind of know where our phones are, I know that I've got phones in these three ranges of IPs. I can pick all three of those and just hit the discover button and this will actually go out and try and find those phones. So just to give you a general overview of some other things that we can do, uh, we see if we go to file, um, we have access to basically set the login admin password. And this is just because um, our discovery methodology is a little bit different this time. Um, it's a little bit more secure. So we do need to put in the password um, associated with the phones um, for the discovery process to work. And we also have a device discovery settings. And this is just um, showing us like, um, how we look for the phones. If we're looking for the first generation phones uh, first and then the Gen 2 second, or if we only look for Gen 1 phones or only look for Gen 2 phones, and um, what connection are, are we using? Do we know if we need to use um, HTTPS versus HTTP? So it just depends on how you have your network set up. Um, this first one, basically, you'll always search for uh, the Gen 2 phones and uh, LS series phones first, and then you'll search for the um, uh, Gen 1 or CTM series phones, and it will search both um, ATT, uh, HTTPS and HTTP um, protocols. And then, of course, if we go into the uh, login admin password, we can see here that we basically just have a selection. Um, so you just pick the phones that um, you're wanting to try to discover. So we know for this what we're going to try and discover, let's say, the um, 2211L, and let's say we want to try and discover the 2415, 2315, and let's say the LS3420. Uh, and you can see here that we have the Gen 1 of the CTM up top. So we'll just put in um, the password that we know for those particular phones. And then for the Gen 2 down here, we'll just put in the password that we have associated with those particular phones. And then we'll apply that. And now when we have um, the IP address ranges that we want to select. And again, we can just do uh, either a shift click or we can do a control click to do a uh, multi-selection. And at this point, we can actually hit the discover button to find those phones. And we can see that it's just going to scan the IP addresses um, that we have selected and it'll uh, use the passwords that we have established and it'll try and uh, go out there and find the phones. And one of the nice things about this new tool is that we get a little bit more information. So as we see, as it's going through the discovery phase, um, you know, like before we get the room number, uh, we get the um, extension that's associated with it, the MAC address, the IP address. Um, we see the registration status as well, whether or not it is um, registered a SIP account. And we get the model number and we also get the um, handset firmware. So if these are cordless devices, um, especially for the Gen 2, we can actually see uh, what firmware those handsets are at. 
And then of course, as we scroll down, we can see our operational history. Um, so depending on what actions you're performing, whether you're doing like firmware upgrade or whether you're pushing um, configuration or performing reboots, you can always look at the operation history to see um, basically the last thing that was done. So we can say that, okay, we just discovered these devices. Um, and then we can also see uh, what connection method uh, we're using. So we know that these three devices we connected to through HTTPS, and then this last one um, uh, basically had HTTP um, available to it, and that's how it's um, connected to that as well. So again, some of the other things that we can do um, now that we've discovered devices um, is we can actually do a search. So if you had a lot more phones in here, let's say you had 100 phones that you um, had searched for, and you want to try and find um, a specific device, we actually have um, search capability now. So you can actually uh, do a keyword search for just about anything. So let's say if there was a specific MAC address that I wanted to find, um, I could plug in just the, the last bit of one of them. So I know that, uh, let's say, DC97, and it'll basically uh, search and find that particular um, device. And if there's multiple uh, results that are found for a specific thing, it'll just, uh, you know, list them kind of at the top to bottom and resort them based on that um, search. And we can also do a search, let's say, for room number. So I know that I'm looking for room 103. I can put 103 in, and then it was able to find that result and just list it down. Or if I want to search for a model number, so I'm looking for all of my uh, 2315s, I can do that keyword search. And again, it's actually selected um, both of the devices that I had for the um, 2315. So this gives you just um, some added flexibility uh, if you do have a, a large list of phones that you are um, using the tool to manage uh, to basically give you um, quicker se selection um, for those devices. Um, you can also just, of course, sort by any one of these fields as well. So if we want to sort by IP address or the status itself, um, that's also available to you. So if we get into some of the, um, the other things that we have here, um, we notice that we do still have the phone specific settings uh, generator. Um, this just looks a little bit different than our previous one. So before we, when we just had the Gen 1 phones, um, this was a little bit of a smaller window. But of course, um, now we support both the Gen 1 and the Gen 2 phones. Um, so we do have to accommodate um, for that. So we notice right in the middle, um, we do have general settings that basically apply to all the phones. So, you know, we have to have speed dials for all the different phones. And um, also the uh, SIP parameters. So, you know, the SIP authentication name, the extension, um, and password and stuff like that, that's going to apply to both phones. So those would actually be in the general column. And then, of course, by default, um, these are the pre-populated ones, because this is going to be the primary thing that will be the difference between multiple phones if you're doing a deployment. Um, typically, you're going to be building a golden sample, of course, that'll have um, you know, the same uh, SIP registration server and the same proxy server. And you're probably also going to have the same speed dials for all your phones. So really, the only thing that's changing between um, each phone is basically just its room number and then the uh, SIP credentials themselves, so uh, username and password and extension. So we've pre-populated that. And as long as we have at least one Gen 1 phone and one Gen 2 phone um, selected. So here I can see that I do have the S2211L and then the S2315 uh, selected. Um, then when we go to generate, it will generate um, basically uh, both versions, a, a Gen, Gen 1 and Gen 2 um, within the Excel Delta file. Um, but if there are other specific settings that you do want to set, um, you know, besides the general list, you can just go down here into uh, the Gen 1 and pick any specific settings that might change per device. And the same thing with Gen 2, pick any specific settings that might change per device. Maybe the dial plan needs to change per, per phone, or maybe you do want to change the port server number, something like that. Um, again, you can just use the left and right arrows to basically um, populate anything that you do want to change uh, between the two. And then when you hit the uh, Generate button, that will, of course, uh, generate the information. And then you can use the view iPad folder to basically uh, pull up that file. Uh, this is just giving you the template, of course, and then you would plug in the specific Delta information, both for the Gen 1, which is labeled as the CTM CL, or Gen 2, which is labeled as the uh, LS series. So you put on all the Delta information and um, save it. And that's the first step to the uh, generating the, the uh, configuration files for all of your phones. Uh, but we'll cover that in a separate video. Um, at this point, we just want to kind of show an overview of, of the tool itself.
So of course, another thing that changed is when you do go into actually generating the um, configuration files themselves, again, because we do support uh, two generations of phones now, um, we just added a few more um, selections because of course you do want to pick uh, what models you're trying to generate files to. So you've got your selection list here on the left. And then uh, we basically have the step where you want to pick uh, basically your uh, golden file uh, for the Gen 1 phones, um, whether you're using uh, the folder style um, configuration or the single file configuration. And then at the same time, you can also specify the Gen 2 um, golden sample file. And you can actually do both of these at once. So we can do Gen 1 and Gen 2 uh, configuration or, or mass generation of files at the same time. And then you basically point to the Delta file um, that you would have created that had all your separate usernames and passwords. And then you can basically just pick uh, what identifier you want to use for that file. If you want to use uh, the MAC address and extension or just the extension and then hit the generate configuration uh, file button. And then of course we'll generate the files for you. And we do give you again, um, the easy ability to view the output folder so you can quickly find uh, where all those files are that were just generated. Okay, so now that we're back at the main screen here, um, another thing we can still do is basically do a push configuration. So uh, if we did actually generate a, uh, a golden sample file, and if we have also generated um, a Delta file, if we don't necessarily want to actually produce all of the individual configuration files to put on a TFTP server uh, for a TFTP pulldown, uh, we do still have the option right here to actually um, push configuration to devices. So if you upload the Delta file uh, right here, and then if you can use either the Gen 1 or the Gen 2 uh, golden sample file, that you can pick. And then of course you can specify uh, pushing by MAC address. So basically the Delta file would include all the MAC addresses of your phones, linked to the appropriate usernames and passwords, um, and along with any other uh, Delta information, and then basically pick the, the golden sample, um, both Gen 1 and Gen 2 at the same time. And then uh, you pick the phones that you wanna push to, and then hit the update. And of course that will do the push configuration. And we do also give you, um, in case you do forget which ones are Gen uh, 1 versus Gen 2, uh, you can click on these blue buttons here and you can get a list of all the model numbers, um, the specific model numbers for uh, the Gen 1 or CTM and CL series versus all of the specific model numbers that are um, considered part of the, the Gen 2 and LS series. And another option that we have is we can actually push a specific configuration file um, to one specific phone. So if we click over to um, this uh, push config with config file, if we wanted to change, let's say one particular phone, um, we need to update just its configuration, maybe changing it to a different um, room number or changing uh, speed dial configuration. Uh, you do have the option to basically pick a specific configuration file and have it um, pushed to that specific phone, uh, just browse for the file and then hit the update button. And again, you can always check the um, operation history to see um, whether or not it succeeded or, or failed um, or anything like that. Now, the other thing that we do have is um, the ability to update uh, firmware, just like we've had before. Um, but of course, now that we have the two generation of phones, we can actually push um, firmware depending on whether it's Gen 1 or Gen 2, and you can actually push them at the same time. Um, so we do see that we have, uh, again, the model list, just so you can kind of uh, do that quick reference to make sure that you know uh, which phone you have and whether it um, sits in the, the Gen 1 CTM series or the Gen 2 um, uh, 15 series or LS series. And basically you just uh, enable which firmware you wanna push and you can hit the load button to basically do uh, browsing. And just a reminder, um, you know, Gen 1, we do have the single file um, that works across all the phones. Um, so that one is a little bit easier. Um, and with Gen 2, uh, you do have to pay attention to which specific phone um, you are trying to load. So we noticed uh, we have one firmware file for let's say uh, a corded um, uh, 15 series phone. So a 23X15 uh, versus the cordless um, series, which would be the 24X15 or, or even the LS series. So um, for, for the Gen 2, you wanna be able to push uh, basically uh, one model at a time, but you can uh, pick those particular files. Or if you did have um, handset firmware that you wanted to update, um, you can pick that one as well. So if I were to pick, let's say, the cordless uh, phone itself and then the cordless handset and uh, the single uh, 
the, the original Gen 1, we can, you know, specify those particular files. And then we can just go and uh, pick the phones that we wanted to, to update. Um, and if we were to hit the update button, it'll go and basically update uh, the firmware on the phone itself. And it would also update the handset firmware. And again, because we can actually see the handset firmware um, right in the list here, we can actually tell if it has finished the update process. So that's always a good thing. And one other nice thing uh, about that is when we see in the uh, handset firmware, we notice that two of these are actually showing up in red. And that's because we are actually doing a check to see if a handset is in range. So if it shows up in red brackets like that, we know that the handset is registered, but it is currently out of range or possibly um, powered off, um, but it's not connected to the base at that particular time, even though it is registered um, to the base. And that actually plays in with the next thing that we want to talk about, which is our monitor capability. Um, so basically, uh, we can uh, use this in order to um, either do an automatic uh, monitoring, where maybe we want to set up a schedule and say, okay, at a specific time or you know every you know couple of hours, we want to basically go and actually monitor um, the devices, and we can even set up an email alert in order to have an email uh, that report out. Um, or you can just do a manual scan at any time. And the manual scan is basically, you can either rely on a uh, config file if you want to upload all the IP addresses and, and MAC addresses to the phones, it'll basically scan just for those particular ones. Or you can again, um, just use our discovery tool up here and pick either the, the one or multiple IP address ranges um, that we want to do the scan for. And once we have those selected, we can just do the uh, scan now. And notice that we do have the check mark for handset out of range detection. Um, so it will report that status as well. And uh, we can just perform the scan. It'll go and uh, look at all those devices. And then it'll just give us a, a nice report of uh, what it finds. See here, the uh, report found that there were um, some phones found. We can see which ones are registered, which ones um, may have an issue. We can see that there's handset details here, that there is uh, two devices, and it gives you the IPEI um, that are out of range that were registered to that device. And then lastly, we do have some admin controls here. So we do have the ability to update um, all the passwords. Um, for all the devices. So again, if you do want to change passwords from the defaults or you just need to change ones that you've already established, um, you can basically just do a range selection of multiple devices and check mark which ones are you changing both uh, Gen 1 and Gen 2 um, or just Gen 2 and basically specify uh, the new passwords for those. And when you hit the apply button, it will just um, update all those devices with the um, correct password. And then, um, of course, we still have some of the uh, same controls we've had before at the bottom. So again, we have the ability to do a, a reboot or we can um, refresh uh, specific devices if we want to just um, check the status of, of one particular one. Um, and we can also uh, clear the device list if, if we don't need to see these ones anymore and we're looking at a different subnet or something like that or a different um, part of the property. Um, we have that available as well. So thanks for joining us to, to go over um, this overview of our uh, mass admin tool. Um, again, we just wanted to give you a, a quick look at it, but we do have a full user guide um, that does walk through all the different functions along with um, installation methods. And um, you can also find uh, the detailed information of how to actually generate um, all of the uh, configuration files along with how to do either the, the um, TFTP pull down or the uh, push um, configuration um, in order to actually uh, register and configure all of your devices.